first of all, like, thanks a ton. Thanks a ton for coming. It's it's a total thrill um, for me. It's it's funny to think, you know, Pinterest is only about three and a half years old. Um, and it didn't seem like that long ago when it was two of us in an apartment. And it didn't seem that long ago when last year there were 15 of us in a little office in Palo Alto. And so to have everyone in the room um, come out today and spend some time, it means a ton. So the first thing I wanted to do is just to thank everyone for coming. You know, when we talk about what we want to build as a company, I always focus on the products that I use every single day. And I think the thing that binds them together is that great products, they give people this one like, really magical experience. So I remember signing up for Facebook for the first time. It was the first time I put my real first name and last name and birthday in. And I hit sign up, uh, and all of a sudden I was reconnected to all these friends I'd lost touch with. And that was their magic moment. I remember signing up for LinkedIn uh, and putting in my resume, and nothing happened for lots of months. Um, <laughs> but eventually, some recruiter found me, and I thought, oh my gosh, like this person out there in the world came and found me uh, and wants to bring me in for an entry-level uh, interview. Which I thought was a really magical experience. And at least for me, um, the company that really defined that, the company that kind of started my love affair with the internet, uh, the first company that hired me to work in California was Google. People take Google for granted a lot, but if you think about it, it's a completely magical thing. Like, ask any question, and if you can think of the right two or three words, what's the weather like today? Uh, where are the coffee places that are near this auditorium? Um, how do I get to the center? Google brings you back an answer. If you know that query, Google goes out into all the billions of web pages and brings you back just the right one, uh, not in a minute, not in a second, but instantly. And it is mind-boggling to think that everybody in the world has access to that in their pocket uh, and on their computer. But as much as we use Google every single day, there are certain questions, big questions, important questions, that you don't really ever think about typing into that box. You don't ask Google, hey, you know, how would I make my living room feel more cozy? What are the things that me and my friends should bring on our camping trip to Yellowstone? Uh, what should my wedding look like? Um, if you do, you're in trouble. Uh, you're not doing well. <laughs> you don't ask Google, uh, what should I make for dinner? Um, you don't ask Google, what are the coolest gadgets? Uh, you don't ask Google, uh, what are the clothes that will make me look or at least feel a little bit cooler than I do today? Um, and these are exactly the kinds of questions that people use Pinterest for every day. They're questions that we think are less about searching and more about discovering. Discovery to us means to find something unexpectedly. It means that even if you don't know those right two or three words, even if someone hasn't created the perfect web page that knows exactly what you care about, we will help you find something. And when you see it, you'll know it and you'll love it and we'll help you do that. Discovery is a problem that's fundamentally unsolved online. It's as hard to discover things as online as it was to search for things before Google. But ironically, I think a lot of the people in the room, especially the people in the retail business, know a ton about discovery because it's the world they've lived in every day for the last 100 years. Go to any store, and some person has thought incredibly carefully about how to create a handmade discovery experience for you. You walk in, and you want a surfboard, and there are the board shorts. You're checking out, and they've got the sunscreen for you. Someone has expressed their opinion on what you want to experience, and they've crafted a physical environment just to make it happen. You don't have to search. They anticipate what you're interested in, and they give it to you right when you need it. If you walk up to a makeup counter, uh, which I don't do often, um, it's been meticulously organized. Someone's thought, which are the colors we're going to show you? Where are the mirrors going to be? What are the accessories that you need? If you walk into an electronics store, it's not a coincidence that the TVs are in the back and they draw you in past all of the cameras. It's not a coincidence that they're at ground level so you can pick them up and play with them. If you go into a department store, someone has thought incredibly carefully about the whole set, the whole collection of things that is going to make that experience really, really special for you. Discovery happens literally every single day in the real world, but today it's still largely an unsolved problem online. And that's the problem that we want to solve. So how did we get here? Well, about three and a half years ago, we didn't have grand visions of filling up an auditorium full of really, really smart marketers. But we wanted to solve another problem that I really felt acutely online. We wanted to bring collections, which was something that I always did as a kid, and put them on the internet. I was a big collector as a kid. I collected butterflies, and I collected stamps. And it felt like a few years ago you could put anything online you wanted. You could put up your photos. You could write a blog. But there was nothing to put these collections up. And I think that collections, even if we don't think of them as the kid kind of collections, even if we think of them as your favorite books or your favorite movies, they tell a lot about exactly who you are. 
Collections are a way of people organizing the world around them, making sense of it. And you don't collect things arbitrarily. You think meticulously, how am I going to put this together? Who am I going to share it with? What does it say about me? If you have a set of baseball cards, do you organize them by team, by greatest shortstops of all time, by best World Series? If you have a set of books, you think about what are the people who come into my apartment going to think of me when they see all those books on the top shelf? Do I put the business for dummies books on the top? Put them on the bottom and all the literature, literature on the top. So our very first product was a product that was designed to let people collect things on the internet and show them off to their friends. And it's a product that you guys are familiar with, and it's very simple. Right? Pinterest lets you pin any object, in this case a watch, and it lets you add it to a collection. Right? And that collection can be whatever you want. You can organize it however you please. Uh, in this case, it's called Gifts for Guy Friends. Right? And you can show that collection um, off to your friends. And the magic thing about putting things online is that once it's online, it becomes linked to all sorts of other interesting things. Right? So with that collection, uh, you can actually go ahead and see um, what are all the items that are related to it. What are the other items that are on that board? Uh, what are the other things, in this case from J. Crew? Uh, you can see all of the other boards that that particular collection has that item in. And that's a way that you can start discovering things. It was actually kind of an epiphany. We put in a lot of those features as afterthoughts. But what we learned was that those features, right, the ability to actually see all the things that are related to exactly what you want, and then the ability to click through and get back to that item so you can go take action on it, that's what made Pinterest really special. Right? What we learned was that the inspiring thing about collections isn't just seeing your own collection up there all alone for everyone to see, but to see all the other people that are interested in the very, very same things that you are to see all the other people that are interested in butterflies, to see all the other people that have exactly the same taste in music as you, to see all the other people that are really interested in baseball cards. That was our first big insight. I'm sure there are people at your company, maybe a few people in this room that say, Pinterest, that's that online scrapbook where Midwestern women put up lots of their recipes and hoard them for themselves and then access them in the kitchen. But if you take a little bit of a step back, I think there's something really more profound that's going on. Pinterest is the first tool that lets anybody with a computer organize the world's objects in a way that makes sense to them, by interest, by project, by passion. And in doing so, they organize those things in a way that's really meaningful for other people. Just by doing something that you love, that inspires you, you plug yourself into a network of like-minded people, and you help organize things in a way that makes discovery really, really easy. On Pinterest, people are organizing the web's content at a massive scale. And in doing that, they're making the web a place that was built by companies like Google, that was created with queries and pages, much more human and much more accessible and much more discoverable every day. So that was our first kind of moment where we realized, wow, this could be really, really cool. We should keep on working on it. Um, but there was something else as well that was really interesting. Right? We realized that as powerful as it is to index all of the web pages in the world and match them up with text queries, we could augment that by letting people organize content for themselves. When you think of Pinterest, it's really tempting to think of it as just another social network. It's just like Facebook, but with more pictures. It's just like Instagram, but there are other people's pictures. But I'd ask you for a second to think about Pinterest more like search. Right? If Google's core value proposition is to organize things by text query, Pinterest's core value proposition is to let people organize things by interests. And for everybody that cares about having their product or service found by someone who's passionate about what they are doing in their life, Pinterest can be a powerful tool to help you. So that was the first moment that was really meaningful for us. And the second one was equally inspiring. What we realized with Pinterest was that we were letting regular people organize all these things into collections. So this is Tiff, a member of our team. She loves recipes. Um, she also loves music. Um, and she's put all of her collections together online. And as soon as we put it inside of Pinterest, Tiff was able to find other people that share her particular points of view. And what we found out was that those people weren't the same people that she happened to be friends with in the real world. There are lots of different social networks. There are social networks based upon who you went to college with. There are networks based upon who you work with. But there weren't yet networks based upon the people that share the same interests that you do. Right? And in some ways, that's one of the most interesting networks of all. 
right? It's a network that's not defined by geography. It's a network that you choose to be into. It's a network that grows with you over time. As you pick up new hobbies, new passions, as you have a kid, as you get married, you can find other people that enjoy the very same things that you do. Pinterest connects people who share similar interests. And that set of connections between people, the things they love, and the other people that share their passions is what we call the interest graph. So what does it look like in practice? Let's take a pin, something a lot of people think is a little bit mundane, like a jar of Vaseline. And let me underscore that this is pinned from the Vaseline website, and it enters into Pinterest and enters into the interest graph. So first, you know, somebody pins uh, this jar of Vaseline, um, and they put it into a collection called Glycerin Free Products. Right? It gets repinned then into something called hair and makeup, where someone says, hey, this is great for moisturizing my skin. Uh, this is great for cleaning off makeup. Someone repins into health and fitness. This is great for preventing chapped lips as I run. Right? And that idea that a single object can be passed from interest to interest, not by SEO targeting or by keywords, but by people just organizing things they're passionate about is at the heart of what makes Pinterest special and makes our partners such an important part of the experience that we're trying to deliver for users. Pinterest lets a single product travel through a network of interests and passions. And by doing that, you connect to people based upon what they care about rather than what you think as marketers they might care about. And I think that's a really exciting proposition. For us at Pinterest, we think that the best way to discover things that you love is through another person that shares your interest. And that's the first part of our mission. That's what everybody who works in our office in San Francisco can tell you, that our goal is to help people discover things they love. And then we want to take it one step farther. I think the services that are most meaningful aren't the ones that close you out from the outside world. They're the ones that get you up and inspire you to go do something in the real life. Every day when we talk to our users, we challenge them to turn off their computer, to put away their iPhone, to get rid of their iPad, and to go out and do some of the things that they're pinning. Right? We want people to pick up new hobbies, to get fit. We want people to do new things with their kids. We want people to cook new recipes. Because we feel that if people use a service that makes their life better every single day, if they feel like they're growing as a person while using the product, Pinterest will be here to stay. It'll be something that grows with you, makes you feel better about yourself, and enriches you, rather than makes you feel distracted and less productive. There are three parts for how we want to achieve this. Three parts of our strategy that we're working really, really hard on. Three insights about inspiration that we think will guide a lot of our future development over the next two, five, ten years. So number one, we think inspiration should be with you everywhere. Today we live in a world where there are computers in your pocket, there are computers in the elevator, there are computers in your car, and we think people want to be inspired, they want to connect to things that they're really passionate about wherever they are. So we make big investments. We work hard to make world-class mobile applications. We're so excited that we're finally getting to a point where you can pull out your phone and have really quick, easy access to all the things that you find inspiring. And today, we're really excited to have partners that are going to explain how they're taking it a step farther, how they're bringing the insights from Pinterest and the inspiration out of your pocket and actually into physical stores. And we have companies like Nordstrom that are going to share how they're doing it and what effect it's having. Insight number two. Whatever your passion is, there's a place for it on Pinterest. A lot of people ask me, Ben, how does it feel to have made a site that so many women use? <laughs> And I always say, that was never our goal. Right? I genuinely believe that inside of everyone is the desire to be creative. Inside of everyone is the desire to build things that are really interesting, to pursue projects that they're really passionate about. And I think Pinterest is a place that people can use to discover all sorts of things. From things that you know, uh, like home decor, fashion, food, crafts, beauty, to things that are just emerging. Vintage cars, custom motorcycles, woodworking, and tools. We want to make Pinterest a place where people feel really excited to express whatever their passion is, and that we seamlessly connect them with other people that share their particular point of view. And our last insight. Inspiration is more meaningful when it's actionable. We think that the best experiences on Pinterest are ones where you see something you love that you didn't even know you wanted, and later you go back and do that thing. You buy that gadget, you cook that recipe, you take that trip. And so recently, we've started making investments to make pins themselves a lot more useful. Pins now will have more metadata. Recipes will have their ingredients and how long it takes to cook. Products will have whether they're in stock or not. Movies will have the ratings so you know exactly what you're signing up for. 
Um, and Kat, who's our product manager and has led up the development, is going to tell us about how this product is developing and how you can use it every day. So the theme of today after this is going to be how we can help you uh, put the interest graph to work. Um, and we're going to talk about three general themes that we hope are really applicable and we hope that everyone here can learn from. So the first thing we're going to encourage everyone to do is to inspire more and more pinning. Right? We think that the easiest way to do this, the simplest thing that everyone can do walking out of this meeting today, is to put the pin it button onto their website. It's just two lines of code. And the thing that we've learned is that many of the partners that do that, they have more people that pin from their site. And in doing that, they drive more traffic back, they get more conversions, and they ultimately help us with our mission of inspiring people to go out and do the things that they really love. We're also going to hear from partners like Sephora who've taken a step farther. They've actually taken the insights they've gotten from Pinterest and incorporated it into their marketing, which in turn drives more people to visit Sephora, drives more people to purchase their makeup, drives more people to make good on all their inspirations. The second major theme that we're going to give is you should learn what works. Right? Earlier this year, we launched our first insights tool, right? a basic data tool that lets people see what content is resonating and what content is not resonating. And it's the first of a bunch of tools that we're going to provide that helps you as a social media manager or as a company understand why are people engaged with your content and in what interest sphere are they really passionate about it. We're going to try to encourage you to take those insights and feed that back into the presence that you create. These first two steps, I think, are where there's the most immediate value for the average partner. Most partners, if they enable people to pin from their site and if they're observant of what's being pinned and what's being clicked on, can have a huge amount of impact, not only on their own customers, but on the interest graph as a whole. They can enrich the interest graph and make sure that their content, that their objects, are a central part of it. And the last thing we're going to talk about is creating an inspiring presence. So today, uh, we have folks um, from Sony, uh, we have folks from Target, that have really done an exemplary job in creating profiles that tell their brand's story in a meaningful way, and at the same time, help our users discover things that they really love within their interests. At the end of the day, we really think that Pinterest is a fundamentally different service. There are many services that are out there that are about searching and finding. Right? They're about keywords and going out in the world and retrieving a particular piece of data. Pinterest is a service about discovering and going out and doing those things. That's what all of our products are going to do. And I want to leave you with one thought. I'd like to leave you with a thought that people are really interested in things. They're not interested in web pages. People often have questions that they want to answer, but they don't know how to form them into queries. That people find the most rewarding experiences in their life, experiences where they learn something about themselves, where they take inspiration from other people that share their passions, and go take that inspiration and make their own life better. That's what discovery is. That's what our mission here is at Pinterest. And we really hope that you'll be on board to help us build it. Thanks.